Oh, hey, didn't see you there. I was just taking a break from my fall garden tasks. By the end of this video, I'm going to show you five lazy fall garden tasks that you could do in your garden that we're doing right now on the farm whenever you feel like it. I'm Zach Buckle. I own Farm Table West, which is this half acre vegetable farm. And we have grown $70,000 in vegetables this year and we're projected to hit $100,000 by the end of the year. So make sure you subscribe to see if we make it. And if you're serious about growing your own food in your backyard, check out my free garden starter guide at the link in the description below. So one of the more important jobs to do at the end of the season is pull any last minute weeds that are going to seed like this to make sure they don't drop seed and grow again next year. So we don't have much left on the farm here because we've been really good at staying on top of them throughout the season but even a little plant like this can drop hundreds of seeds that'll grow again next year and be a big headache so the more you do this at the end of the season the more immaculate your garden's going to be in the spring and just make it easier for you and less stressful so you know we're kind of just doing this on the farm whenever we feel like it whenever we're looking for something to do and as you can see, I'm, I've got like three weeds in this whole bed. There's not much left, but even that one little plant has got hundreds of seeds. This is amaranth, and this guy spreads like crazy. So it doesn't hurt to just, you know, take a little walk through your garden, grab anything that looks like this, and make sure you take it out. Don't just throw the plants back in the bed because there's still seeds here that will germinate next spring and the more and more you do this the less you're going to have to do it because this is reducing the seed bank in your bed so just take a little bit of time and pull these guys that are going to seed and get them out because you want the gar the weeds to grow somewhere else not where you're growing food so another thing we do a lot of at this time of year whenever we feel like it, is harvest fall crops. And these are what I call determinate fall crops because they're not gonna really grow anymore and the more we harvest, the more we can open up beds to prep for the spring. So carrots are, are an example of this. And so are onions. And so are radishes. So as we chip away at these onions, carrots, and radishes, we'll open up a whole bed that we'll be able to do our next garden task, which is amending the bed. So one of the most important garden tasks in the fall slash spring, because we kind of do this slowly but surely whenever we feel like it, is the amending beds process, which for us, involves broad forking, which is what I'm doing right now. Basically that's aerating the soil. You don't always have to do this, but I have really heavy clay soil. So this helps roots go deep in the ground without tilling. And it helps my amendments go a little deeper in the soil. So eventually I hopefully won't have to do this. But I have concrete clay soil, so I do this for a little while. I'm gonna keep doing it. I've done it for about four years now and probably do it for another couple to get my really nice amendments deep in the soil so I don't have to uh, use a pickaxe to plant things because that's kind of what it feels like a lot of times. And then the other thing I'm doing is adding sand. Now, this is not something you wanna do if you already have sandy soil. I have clay concrete soil, but if you have sandy soil and you want it to be holding water better, you can add literally pottery or little pieces of clay and that'll slowly break down into your soil. So I've got this uh, masonry sand that I got from a local gravel pit and I put it in this zigzag pattern because of 
the next tool I'm going to show you to uh, make sure that it goes evenly because this is something I'm hopefully never going to add again. This will make my soil a little more sandy. And then <clears throat> we add compost, which you've probably seen before if you've watched gardening videos. But, you know, this takes a lot of work. It's a good workout. So we like to do it really slowly and surely because if you do this whole field in the day, you're going to end up in the hospital because moving compost is heavy, even on a small garden. So the way I like to do it is just slowly chip away at it because these things, these beds are not going to get planted again until like May of next year. So we have all the way until May of next year to get these, this job done basically. So we take it real slow. I like to add about an inch a year right now. So I do basically do one bucket for five feet of bed and my beds are 30 inches wide, which is two and a half feet. Um, and five feet of that with one bucket spread evenly like I just did is about an inch of compost. And that's really good fuel for the plants. And then we also add a mid-season amendment too, but that's a lot shorter and uh, easier to put on. So we got our sand and our compost on the next thing is tilthing. Now on my farm, <clears throat> I use a fancy tool to do that, but <clears throat> in a garden, you're not gonna buy a tilther probably cause that's, you know, five, $600, but I'm doing 80 beds or 40 beds, 40, 50 foot beds in this field alone. The whole farm is 80 beds. So what I used to do before I had the fancy tilther was use just a little rake like this and do a little thing like this. Cause what this is doing is slowly working that compost and the sand into the soil a little bit. And it's work all right, which is why, you know, you don't want to do all of this in one day, but this will slowly work all that stuff in the soil. And then you come back once you've done this and rake it flat and this slowly works in whatever amendments you want to put in just in that first inch or two of the soil and now it should be pretty evenly amended and basically ready to plant in the spring so this saves us a ton of work in the spring because we have a lot more things to focus on like seeding and grafting tomatoes and stuff. So I like to get as much of this job done in the fall as I can, but I also don't want to stress about it. So like as we harvest one whole bed of carrots, which we can do in a couple hours, that bed's opened up, then we can spend the afternoon doing this and enjoy the weather, look at the mountains. And it's a peaceful job as opposed to doing 20 beds in a day and it being really stressful and backbreaking. So you can do the same strategy in your garden as you have a couple feet that's opened up that you harvested carrots, you could just slowly do this right when you're done and then it slowly gets done over time and you're not stressed about it in the spring. So that's a cool little garden hack, slowly but sure. And one other thing to mention is you don't actually need a real broad fork like me to do this. A digging fork like this will work just fine. You could get these at pretty much any local hardware store. Ace Hardware has these. This is just a digging fork. Same thing we use to harvest carrots. Does the same thing. You just stick it in the ground, lift back about as far as the tines go. Same with the broad fork. And that soil has a ton of air in it now that roots can go really deep. And that's how we get really nice carrots in our concrete clay soil all the time. Another thing we're doing whenever we feel like it is harvesting the indeterminate fall crops like this cilantro and dill. And I call them indeterminates because we're going to harvest them for as long as we possibly can, you know, until we get a foot of snow on the ground or it's negative 30 basically, because these kinds of crops can take a really 
large amount of cold weather and they just get sweeter as it gets colder and it's just more food later in the season without any extra greenhouses or extra effort and there's a ton of crops that you can harvest like this kale dill parsley all of that stuff is a great late season fall crop. And so we don't amend these until the spring because we're gonna probably just leave them in the ground until, you know, as late as we can because it's just more crops for us to sell at the market. But the same thing applies for you in your garden. So you don't have to do that whole amending process right now. You could just, you know, make some progress on it slowly but surely and do some of it in the spring too. because it. You know, when you break it up like this, it doesn't seem so overwhelming. And this just gets you more food later in the season. So anything that's really cold tolerant, like spinach or kale, you can harvest now and you might actually get more later. Like this cilantro I'm harvesting right now might regrow and I might get more in November, December. So. We're just kind of harvesting whatever we need for the market slowly. We're not harvesting like whole beds at a time now. It's just whatever we need. And then we might get a bonus plan because right now this fall has been ridiculously warm for us in Wyoming. So we're really lucky that it's looking like all of my late season fall crops are gonna keep growing possibly the rest of October, which is unheard of kind of because the last three years we've gotten a pretty much blizzard the first week in October, right about this time of year. So very fortunate to have this much stuff, but if you plan your garden right, you can always get some kind of bonus plan at the end, you know? And if you did have a big blizzard coming, then you wanna probably harvest all of it and then try and use it up and just amend that bed right away in, in the fall. So you just kinda harvest based on what the weather's looking like, but it's really nice when the 10 day forecast has no blizzard and you can just relax, harvest whatever you want because you know that it's all bonus planned at this point. So we're just slowly but surely harvesting these kinds of crops. We got a whole field of them right now and you know, whatever happens, happens. And the last thing we're doing is watering. So this is something that you might not always do in the fall because you think your plants are done growing. But I'm still watering at least once a week right now because I can tell there's still good growing weather late in this month. You know, our 10 day forecast right now is in the mid 70s and like 40s at night. Plants will still grow in that weather. So I wanna make sure that they have enough water to keep growing. I still have a ton of onions out in the field that are just gonna get bigger and they're still standing up. So I'm just taking full advantage of this nice weather we have, which we don't always have. So it's all bonus plan for me, but watering will keep your plants growing. Even if it's like 25% as fast as they grow in the summer, that's still more, right? So that little bit matters. It really matters for me because we have 120 day frost free growing season. We've already had plenty of frosts but they've been very light and barely damaged anything. So I know that 99% of what I have out in the field is still gonna grow a little bit. And even five, 10% growth is a lot for me. Those radishes that I was harvesting are still like 80% ready when, but I'm pretty confident that in 10 days, they'll get almost twice as big because most plants, the majority of the weight or the growth of the crop happens that last 10% of its time in the ground. And so I'm trying to take full advantage of that because I'm pushing the envelope with a couple of things in here and having really good water is a huge part of that because those radishes are just going to swell up and suck up the water I'm putting on them right now. So I like to water the field as deep into the season as I can. You can't always do it like this. Like last year, I wouldn't have been able to do this. But since I could tell our next 10 days are looking really warm and sunny, 
That's a key detail. We have plenty of sun in Wyoming. That's the nice thing. These crops will still grow. So that's an advantage of watching the weather and taking advantage of, you know, the sun and warmth that you have. But giving your plants water will help them grow more. So if you have any questions about fall gardening in your climate or experience that you've had fall gardening in your climate, please leave a comment below. I'd love to start a conversation about this because I'd love to learn what kind of fall gardening techniques work in your climate. Every climate's different. It's taken me years to get good at fall gardening in Wyoming because it's never as simple as just looking at days to maturity on a seed packet. I have had to just learn from experience and my garden journal helps a lot with that. So I know what time I planted certain crops and what time I harvested them. And that gives me the confidence to actually get the crop that I want in my climate. So I'd love to see what your experiences are. Please leave a comment below. If you're serious about growing food in your backyard, please check out my free garden starter guide in the link in the description. I go over how to set up a really easy no dig garden in four easy steps and subscribe for more videos like this because I got a lot more to say about growing food. Hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next